they created a new position uh, focused on internal communications. So they wanted to communicate with employees better and brought me in to help them figure out how to do that. Before starting, I had never stepped foot in a warehouse. Um, so it was a tremendous learning experience for me. Almost immediately, the team started to talk to me about a career in human resources. There really was no career path for me in communications. But at the time, I looked at the person who was in human resources, um, and I did not want any part of that career. So I had the opportunity to go help Target open a brand new distribution center. We hired 400 people um, in about a month. And I got an opportunity to see human resources in action and a much better model of what it could look like. So I joined Human Resources and worked my way up in, within Target. I oversaw multiple distribution centers and then I then had the opportunity to go work for Home Depot. Uh, very similar, it was a human resources role um, overseeing 15 distribution centers. So then, I had an opportunity to go work for a very, very different company. I lived in Las Vegas at the time. And if you have ever been to Las Vegas, or if you have ever heard of Las Vegas, the answer is yes, it is a very, very strange place to live. So I went to work for a private organization that was formed to revitalize downtown Las Vegas. What was interesting, we had, um, we had restaurants and operations that we directly owned. We had a small business investment portfolio, so we invested in first-time business owners. And then we also had real estate holdings um, as part of this company. What was also very interesting about this opportunity was that we were operating with self-management. And self-management is very interesting. So we had about 300 employees and no people managers in the company. And the answer is yes, it was also just as strange as you might imagine. <laughs> So 
So it was a very interesting time. I had the, my husband and I had the opportunity to move back to Seattle, which had been our home. Um, we had been away for about 15 or 16 years. So I had the opportunity to go work for Rational Interaction. And when I started two years ago today, I was the only HR person. And we now have a team of about 10. And so I talk about that career path partly because, again, if you had asked me as a college student what my career would look like, I never would have imagined that I would be here now. So, but the ability to work for both very, very large companies and also very small companies Also, companies that have been around for a very long time and brand new companies. It really has given me a very broad perspective on the role of human resources. So I want to talk for a little bit about diversity as a competitive advantage. So why would we, the talk, the talk is called Confronting Unconscious Bias, but to be able to do that, we really have to look at why we would focus on diversity in the first place. First and foremost, diverse companies, teams, that, may, uh, that are very diverse outperform teams that are not. So this statistic here that's shared is that companies with more women on their boards of directors perform 55% higher than companies with all male boards of directors. So for us in the role of human resources, our goal is to build the best team. Our goal is to build the most high performing team. And to do that, it's become very clear that the best way to do that is to have a truly diverse team. In addition, diverse teams are better at tackling very complex problems. So in HR, if we want to create the best teams that perform, we want to hire diverse teams. So let's talk about what might get in the way of that. So the concept of unconscious bias, um, let's talk about how we define that. For me, the simplest definition is this. We are most comfortable with people who are like us. And why does that matter? You think there's a very, very distinct neurological reason that we would have some form of bias. So for us, every moment, we process roughly 11 million bits of information at one time. And 
And yet, our brain can only process 40 of those consciously. So it would not be possible for us to be conscious of all 11 million bits of information at any time. We would be completely incapacitated and would not be able to do anything. So our brains have to come up with shortcuts for us to be able to function. And again, there's a very distinct biological need for this. So many, many thousands of years ago, if we were to come upon this situation, your brain would need a very quick way to determine that this is a threat. So again, there's a very, very good use for some types of bias. In this situation, I would be biased to act very quickly and move away. En esta situación, yo, yo utilizaría ese instinto para rápidamente correr. But what this also means, if we go back to the earlier statistic, lo que esto también nos indica es que si nosotros vamos a la estadística, it means that this staggering percentage, 99.999996% of the information that we process is unconscious. El 99.999996% lo procesamos inconscientemente. So, but this can also lead to unintended consequences as well. Esto también nos puede llevar a intenciones no intencionadas. It can lead us to seek out familiarity. Nos lleva a buscar familiaridad. So how do we work through this? ¿Cómo trabajamos en contra de esto o a través de esto? For me, it's with intention. Para mí, es con intención. So when we talk about the hiring process, there is a very distinct danger in us continually seeking out the familiar. Entonces, cuando hablamos del proceso de contratación, Siempre hay este factor de buscar personas familiares o que tengan compatibilidad con nosotros. So let's talk about some very specific things that you can do in an interview process to um, account for the unconscious bias. Entonces vamos a hablar de ciertos factores que nos pueden, eh, que les pueden servir para el proceso de, de entrevista. So we'll start by talking through the different types of bias that exist. Vamos a hablar de los tipos, eh, de diferentes tipos de perfiles familiares. First one is called stereotyping. El primero es estereotipar. And this is forming an opinion of someone based on some characteristic of theirs. Esto es formar una opinión de alguna persona basado en su género, eh, raza o religión o en su apariencia. The second type is called prejudging. La segunda es prejuzgar. And what this means is that we very frequently will make an assessment or a judgment based on our first impression of someone. Y esto básicamente es que vamos a formar o a formular un juicio en base a la persona la primera vez que la veamos. The next type of bias is what we refer to as halo and horn. La segunda se llama halo y horn. And what this means is that we might fixate or focus on something that a person said and draw either a very good or a very bad conclusion based on one small piece of information. A lo que esto se refiere es que podemos agarrar una pieza de información o una palabra que nos lleve a prejuzgarlo ya sea para bien o para mal. The next type is called projection. La otra es eh, proyección. And this is one where we, the, the candidate may remind us of someone that we know, and then we assume that that candidate is just like this other person that we know. 
En esta, el candidato nos recuerda o nos proyecta a una persona que conocemos o inclusive a, nuestras, a nuestra propia persona. Generalization. Generalización. Is one where we assume that someone may act like a broad group of people. So, for example, all young people, millennials, an older generation, there are lots of ways that we make generalizations. Es cuando hacemos un juicio general y decimos, bueno, por ser joven, es un millennial. And the last type of bias that we'll talk about today is called similar to me, which is just as it sounds. We assume somebody reminds us of ourselves, and so we then form a very good opinion about that person because they remind us of ourselves. Y la última que vamos a ver es alguien similar a mí, y pues como la palabra lo dice, o esta nos dice, es que buscamos a alguien similar a nosotros o que se parezca a nosotros. So what can we do now that we know what types of bias might exist? First, it's important to recognize those so that we can be more aware when they're happening. ¿Y qué podemos hacer cuando reconocemos alguno de estos factores? So the first thing we can do is change the type of questions that we're asking in an interview. La primera que podemos hacer es cambiar el tipo de preguntas que vamos a hacer en una entrevista. So I refer to these as behavioral based questions. Yo me refiero a estas como preguntas basadas en el comportamiento. And what this means is, instead of asking how someone might do something or what they believe about something, we ask them about their specific experience. En vez de preguntarle directamente qué haría usted en esta situación, mejor le preguntamos si tiene alguna experiencia estando en esta situación. And the reason for this is that the best, we are trying to measure someone's future potential when we're interviewing them. Y lo mejor de esto es que estamos tratando de ver su eh, potencial. And the best way to predict someone's future potential is their past behavior. Y la mejor manera de predecir el potencial es cómo se ha comportado anteriormente. So with this type of question, we focus on real life scenarios. Con este tipo de preguntas, nosotros nos enfocamos en escenarios de la vida real. We ask a candidate to focus on what they've actually done rather than how they might handle a situation. Preguntamos al candidato qué ha hecho y no qué pensaría él o qué pensará hacer. And we ask questions based on competencies or requirements for success for that specific job. Hacemos preguntas eh, específicamente de lo que de sus cualidades para que ellos puedan tener éxito o qué harían para poder tener éxito. So here are some examples of what that might look like. Aquí hay unos ejemplos de cómo podría verse esto. Instead of asking how do you like to manage your team, en vez de preguntar cómo te gustaría manejar a tu equipo, we would ask tell me about a time you had to help someone improve their performance. Podríamos preguntar eh, cuéntame de algún, eh, de algún momento o en qué momento tú pudi eh, oops, pudiste haber ayudado a alguien de tu equipo. Instead of asking, how creative are you in your work? En vez de preguntar, ¿qué tan creativo eres tú en tu trabajo? We would ask, tell me about a time you had to come up with a creative approach to solve a problem. Le preguntaríamos, eh, le preguntaríamos que nos contara sobre algún momento en que tuvo que usar su creatividad para resolver algún problema. Do you see the difference with the questions? Sí, identifican la diferencia con las preguntas. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Yeah, of course. How would you determine if they're telling you the truth? Well, that's a great question. Um, go ahead and repeat it. Ella pregunta cómo uno puede saber si están diciendo o no la verdad. Es una gran pregunta. At the end of the day, it may not matter. Al final del día, puede que no importe. And the reason I say that is, part of it is you want to dig in um, and ask follow-up questions. Y la razón que digo esto es porque habría que indagar más y hacer más preguntas. So my goal with these types of questions Mi objetivo is, con este tipo de preguntas es is to really find out a person's thought process. Realmente saber el proceso de pensamiento de una persona. So the follow-up questions are really around, why did you do that? Why did you think it was important to do that? Las preguntas eh, consecuentes serían, ¿por qué hiciste eso? ¿Por qué pensas que esa era la correcta? Sometimes it's how. How did you go about doing that? Um, depending on the question and what you're trying to get at. Algunas veces es cómo. 
a lot of times, if the person is not able to answer the follow-up questions, you have a pretty good idea of whether they're telling you the truth or not. Muchas veces, cuando no, eh, no nos responden las preguntas eh, consecuentes, ya tenemos más o menos una idea de qué se trata. I would say most of the time, and you will never know for sure, um, but most of the time, if people cannot answer the follow-up or the details about it, um, then you know they may not be telling you the whole story. Después de hacer las preguntas, si la persona no dice o, o no sabe cómo responder, uno ya tiene eh, la idea de que no está diciendo lo correcto. So the next part of this process then is what I call a competency rating scale. And so this is something you would develop for each question in the interview. Ahora vamos a ver en esta tabla las, eh, la escala de competencias y vamos a ver cómo funciona. So you want to start with what is the most important, what are the most important traits that would make someone successful in this job? Vamos a empezar con cuáles son eh, las características más significantes para eh, este trabajo. In this example, we're calling it time management. En este ejemplo, le va, ponemos el manejo del tiempo. Then the question is, tell me about a time you missed a deadline. Mm -hmm. Y la pregunta es, dime una, alguna vez o alguna ocasión en que faltaste a tu fecha límite. So you'd ask the question and then your follow-ups to get there, to get all of the detail. Entonces haces la pregunta y después las preguntas consecuentes para poder tener todo, eh, toda la información. And then you give the person a rating on how they answered the question. Y después le damos a la persona eh, una nota o una calificación en base a la respuesta que nos dio. So we have a one through five rating, but the description is specific to the competency that we're trying to measure. Tenemos una calificación de uno a cinco, pero en este caso específicamente a la, la característica que estamos buscando en la persona. So for example, a one out of five would be that they did not ask for help and they did not notify their supervisor in this example. Mm -hmm. Eh, por ejemplo, en la primera, si, eh, si calificamos como número uno, sería cuando no le notificó a su supervisor o a su superior de que esto estaba pasando, que no iba a poder llegar a su fecha límite. So a three out of five might be when they were prompted, they asked for help or they notified their supervisor. Si esta persona sacara tres de cinco, es porque pudieron eh, haberle preguntado a un supervisor o eh, haber eh, dado cuenta de que, que iba a pasar y, y tomar en cuenta que no iban a poder llegar a esa fecha límite. And a five out of five might be that they regularly and proactively communicated with their supervisor and their team as they were completing the task. Y si esta persona fuera calificada con cinco de cinco, sería porque eh, identificó el problema, se comunicó eh, y pudo... Eh, resolver el problema diciendo que va a faltar a esa fecha límite pero que lo puede hacer. Couple of things to know about setting up the interview process this way. Algunas de las cosas que deben de saber eh, al momento de hacer este proceso en una entrevista es First it takes a lot of work up front to put this together. Toma mucho trabajo al principio armar esto. However, once that is done, you can use these over and over again. Pero cuando ya lo hacemos, los podemos utilizar y reutilizar. Because it's very likely that more than one of your jobs will have a need for strong time management. Porque ese, en este caso que estamos hablando del tiempo del manejo, eh, es recurrente que vayamos a utilizar esta competencia. At the end, uh, this, using this type of a structure, using this type of a process, gives you a much better likelihood of working out some of the unconscious bias in the process. Utilizando este método, lo que podemos hacer es quitar eh, algunos de los factores anteriores para el proceso. The last part of this process that I think is really important um, is what I call the group recap discussion. Eh, lo, lo último, pero no lo menos importante, es lo que yo, di, eh, lo que yo le llamo la recapital, recapitulación de grupo. And what this is, is where you have more than one person who has interviewed your candidate, and you get together to discuss your thoughts. 
y básicamente es tener un grupo de personas que todas entrevistaron al candidato y reunir sus pensamientos o sus opiniones. The first part is the blind rating. And what I mean by that is each person makes a decision without talking to anyone else about what they think, whether you think they think you should hire that person or not. La primera es una, calific una calificación a ciegas, que esto quiere decir que cada uno le dio una calificación sin que los demás sepan eh, al momento de entrevistar. The reason for that is that if you go around the room and ask each person in the room what they thought, that's very likely to influence everyone else's opinion of that candidate. Lo que sucede es que si vamos uno por uno con nuestro equipo preguntándole qué pensás de este candidato, puede ser que las opiniones de las demás personas Influ eh, sean influenciables en mi opinión. So there are a couple ways you can do this. You can have each person write down their decision on a paper and pass it to one person to read out loud. Hay formas de poder hacer esto. Una sería que todos los, eh, todas las personas en el equipo escriban el nombre del candidato que les parece y que lo pasen sin que los demás sepan. If you have a group that's very comfortable with each other, one thing that a te my team used to do is that we would say on the count of three. Eh, una técnica que ella utiliza con su equipo es esta. A la cuenta de tres. On the count of three. One, two, three. And we would say either hand, thumbs up or thumbs down. Um, and everybody would do it at the same time. Entonces, cuando al momento que hacemos esta eh, dinámica, todos pueden decir sí, sí o sí, no. So there are a couple of different ways you can do it, but it's important not to have people influence um, others' assessment of a candidate. Hay muchas formas de las que se pueden hacer, pero es importante que no se que no se deje influenciar para el mismo candidato. In addition to that, it's also important for you to justify the rating that you have given to that particular candidate, to know, to be able to explain why you felt like someone was a strong candidate or not. Adicional a eso, también es importante que cada uno justifique el por qué este candidato es un candidato fuerte o no. It's also, as part of this process, very important to acknowledge where potential bias may come into play. Es también muy importante, es una parte muy importante del proceso, saber qué familiaridades hay y, y cuáles son eh, buenas para saber. So that's about the interview process. I want to talk about a few more things, um, a few more ways that we might be sending signals that we may not be aware of. Eso es básicamente para el proceso de entrevista. So the first signal that we may be sending is through the job description. La primera señal que podemos enviar es la descripción del trabajo. There are a lot of ways in which we describe the work that needs to be done that may be unintentionally biased. Hay muchas maneras de las cuales podemos describir un, um, un trabajo y que nosotros pongamos características eh, no malintencionadas. So there's research that suggests that words like strong, competitive, assertive appeal more to men than women. Hay, eh, hay información en que nos dice que cuando las palabras fuerte, eh, competitivo eh, o candidato se refiere a una figura masculina. And words like community, polite, pleasant, connect, all appeal more often to women. Y hay eh, unas que tienen las palabras como eh, conectado con la comunidad, eh, amable, eh, conectado o conectada que eh, se refieren más a la, eh, a la mujer. So it's important to look at your job descriptions because those may be some ways that you're signaling, whether you mean to or not, that this job might be a better fit for a man or a woman. Entonces tenemos que ver detalladamente la descripción de los trabajos para que no haya este tipo de palabras y que solo se vaya para eh, lo masculino o lo femenino. So it's important to use more neutral language. So we have some examples here. Instead of saying we're looking for strong, you'd say we're looking for exceptional. Es importante que utilicemos palabras neutrales como en vez de decir estamos buscando por alguien fuerte, eh, estamos buscando alguien excepcional. 
Instead of saying nurture and connect with customers, we would say provide great customer service. En vez de decir que son unos, en vez de decir que unos clientes conectados o mimados, podemos decir que provee un buen servicio al cliente. It's also important not to use gendered language like he or she. Use the term you and speak directly to the candidate as opposed to referring to them in third person. Es también importante no utilizar él o ella, si no podría ser en nuestro caso usted. The next way is the office. So this is particularly um, an issue in Silicon Valley or in startups. Eh, la otra parte sería la oficina. Este es un factor que vemos en Silicon Valley, mm -hmm. ¿verdad? O donde ella está. So what happens is you have a, in a startup, you have a group of engineers, typically men, get together, they all like the same thing. Lo que sucede es que eh, a veces tenemos los pequeños emprendimientos y pueden ser un grupo pequeño de ingenieros y a todos les gustan las mismas cosas. And they might be very interested in having a diverse team and they start to add to their diverse team. Ellos pueden estar interesados en tener un grupo diverso y en agregar personas a ese grupo diverso. But even in small ways, their workspace might still reflect the original very small group of people who think the same way. Sin embargo, aún así puede ser que hayan cosas pequeñas que reflejen su forma de trabajar o la forma en la que ellos son. So these are things to think about with your office. Does it appeal more to one group versus another, um, to one gender versus another? Um, so these are all ways that we send signals, again, whether we mean to or not, um, about how welcoming the workplace is. Lo que podemos observar en nuestras oficinas o en nuestro lugar de trabajo es si tienen más afinidad con qué tipo de personas. And the last part I want you to think about is the interview panel. So if you're bringing someone in to interview. Y la última parte que necesito en la que, que piensen es las personas que entrevistan. Are the people that they are interviewing, your candidate is interviewing with, do they look like them? Las personas que están entrevistando a sus candidatos se parecen a ellos. Es la pregunta que deben de hacerse. If you're trying to attract more women to your workplace, are any women sitting on the interview panel? Si ustedes están tratando de llamar más mujeres a su equipo de trabajo, ¿hay alguna mujer haciendo las entrevistas de trabajo? So if your interviewers all look the same, you're sending another very strong signal about what type of workplace and how welcoming you are. Si los reclutadores se ven igual que las personas que están eh, entrevistando, están enviando una señal bastante fuerte de lo que desean. So to wrap up this part, um, we'll go back and review a couple of things that are really important for confronting bias. Solamente para resumir, vamos a, a ir paso por paso viendo una de las cosas que ya vimos. First and foremost, it's important to recognize that we are all subject to having unconscious bias. Lo primero que tenemos que hacer es reconocer que todos inconscientemente buscamos un parecido. It's important to educate ourselves on the types of bias that exist. Es importante que nos eduquemos en, las diferentes, en los diferentes tipos de parecidos que existen. The more that we are aware of them, the more that we can be conscious um, and fight them. Eh, lo más que sepamos de ellos es mejor porque entonces podemos evitarlos. Second, if we think about how we're interviewing, uh, behavioral-based interview questions, Lo segundo sería eh, ver el comportamiento al momento de las al momento de formular las preguntas de la entrevista. Using ratings based on competencies. Usando la tabla de del 1 al 5 para poder hacer la calificación. Looking at your interview teams. Viendo nuestro equipo de de reclutamiento and evaluating signals like job descriptions and your office y evaluando los, las descripciones de trabajo o de nuestra oficina. 
So these are all ways that we can continue to try and fight um, unconscious bias and hopefully have much more diverse teams. Así podemos observar de cómo evitar las familiaridades o los parecidos y poder encontrar más equipos diversos. So the last part I wanted, to, I wanted to make sure we had a little bit of time. I'll go through this a little bit quickly. Um, but especially if you're here interested in the interview process, there's a good chance you're also interested in the role of human resources, or maybe you're even operating in human resources. Si ustedes se encuentran aquí para ver el proceso de, de reclutamiento, también les va a interesar esta parte del rol de recursos humanos. It's something I'm particularly passionate about, and that is the changing role of human resources. Es algo de lo que particularmente me siento muy apasionada, y es el cambio del rol de recursos humanos. So I want to tell you a little story about how I created a social movement for human resources. Les voy a contar una pequeña historia de cómo creé un, um, un movimiento en las redes sociales. First of all, this is the reputation of human resources in the U.S. today. Primero que nada, esta es la reputación de los recursos humanos en los Estados Unidos. So these are magazines that say, why we hate HR on the cover. Estas son revistas que dicen, por qué odiamos recursos humanos en la portada. Or articles that are called, HR is not your friend. O artículos que dicen, recursos humanos no es tu amigo. And this is the state of human resources in the United States today. Este es el estado en que se encuentra eh, los recursos humanos en los Estados Unidos. And yet, as I look at this, I think that there are some very fair criticisms of how human resources has operated. Y aún así viendo esto, pienso que tienen razón eh, algunas de las críticas que, de las cuales eh, son acusados. So a little over a year ago, más o menos hace un año, People started using the hashtag Me Too. Las personas eh, utilizaron el hashtag Me Too. They were telling stories about how they had been harassed in the workplace. Eh, contaban historias eh, sobre que habían sido eh, de, algún, de algún tipo acosados en su trabajo. They were telling stories about how they had been assaulted. Contaban historias de cómo ellos habían sido acosados o En este caso, eh, perdón, asaltados. And people would respond over and over again, me too. Y las personas responderían una y otra vez, me too. So as this conversation is growing within the United States, así como eh, mientras crecía esta conversación en los Estados Unidos, people kept saying over and over again, if you are harassed, do not go to HR. Las personas seguían diciendo, si tú eres acosado, no vayas a Recursos Humanos. And the reason they're saying that is because human resources has failed employees. Y la razón por la cual dicen esto es porque Recursos Humanos ha, eh, ha perdido o ha fallado al momento de hacer esto. So last year, Time Magazine named their Person of the Year. El año pasado, la revista Magazine eh, puso esta, por, esta portada de Persona del Año. And it was the silence breakers, the women who had spoken up and had gone public with their own stories. Y fue eh, una portada de rompe silencio porque las, las mujeres estaban contando su historia. And right about this time, in my company, Rational, we had someone come forward and accuse a very high-powered person of harassment. Y justamente en, esto, en este momento, en la compañía Rational, en donde ella trabaja, eh, una, de, una de las personas de los empleados acusó a eh, una persona, un directivo, de algo, eh, de un tipo de acoso. And we took the opportunity to do things very differently. Y tomamos la oportunidad de hacer las cosas diferente. We did the investigation and we found the claims to be true. Hicimos la investigación y vimos que la acusación era verdadera. And instead of telling people that he had resigned to spend time with his family. 
Y en vez de decirle a las personas que él había eh, presentado su renuncia para pasar tiempo con su familia, we told our employees that he had been fired. Les dijimos a nuestros empleados de que él había sido despedido. And we told them to come join us for a company meeting that we called Company Culture in the Era of Me Too. Y los invitamos a que participara en una reunión cultural, bueno, que se llama eh, una nueva reunión cultural de el Me Too. And we had an open forum. We asked people what they wanted to know. Y tuvimos una conversación abierta en donde, pregun en donde les hicimos preguntas a las personas y también que nos hicieran preguntas de qué querían saber. And we learned that people wanted to know things like what the investigation process was, how that worked. Y nos encontramos con preguntas como, ¿cómo funciona el proceso de investigación? People expressed fear of coming forward because they didn't want to get someone fired. Las personas expresaron su temor de cómo ellas no querían ser despedidas. But more than that, they expressed fear of working for a company where these things would not be dealt with. Pero eh, peor aún, expresaron su temor eh, al de no querer trabajar en una empresa donde no se hace nada al respecto. And more than anything, after this meeting, our employees thanked us for having such an open forum. Y al final, pues los empleados nos agradecieron por tener esta charla abierta. So then, the Golden Globes happened. Después eh, tuvimos los premios Globos de Oro. And Time's Up is an organization that was formed in the entertainment industry. Y se acaba el tiempo, Time's Up es una organización de and esta industria. This was the year that they all wore black to call attention to harassment in the entertainment industry. Este fue el año en que todos se vistieron de negro para llamar la atención del acoso en, eh, en este ámbito. The next day, The New York Times had a two-page article or two-page advertisement. Al día siguiente, el periódico New York Times puso en su portada este eh, esta portada que vemos aquí. And what it says is, he said, she said, he said, she said, he said, she said, she said, she said, she said, and it fills the page. Y lo que dice es, él dijo, ella dijo, él dijo, ella dijo, él dijo, ella dijo, ella dijo, ella dijo, y así llenan toda la página. And it says the truth has a voice. Y dice, la verdad tiene una voz. And so within the agency and within our company, we're talking to each other saying, where is this in business? Entonces en la agencia eh, empezamos a hablarnos unos a nosotros y dijimos, ¿dónde está esto? En el negocio. Where are the business leaders standing up, standing up and saying, no more? ¿Dónde están los líderes de los negocios diciendo, eh, ya basta? The more we talked about it, the more we realized that there's a group of people who have been at the center of this issue from the start. Y entre más lo hablamos, más realizamos de que habían personas eh, tomando esto en cuenta. It's a group of people who have been part of the problem, but also hold the key to the solution as well. Es un grupo de personas que ha sido parte del problema, pero también tiene la llave para ser parte de la solución. And that's HR. Y eso es Recursos Humanos. So we created an organization we call Times, or we call HR Uprise. Hemos creado una organización que se llama HR Uprise. And we, our agency came up with the logo and the imagery. So it's a desk upside down and the HR logo upside down um, because we really want to disrupt the industry as a whole. Y nuestra agencia ha creado este logo donde ustedes pueden observar que es un escritorio eh, al revés y desordenado. As you can imagine, we weren't entirely sure how HR would respond. Como ustedes se pueden imaginar, no estamos muy seguros de cómo iba eh, Recursos Humanos a responder. So we started with an Instagram account. Entonces, iniciamos con una cuenta de Instagram. It says, HR needs its soul back. Que dice, eh, Recursos Humanos necesita su alma de vuelta. We send out messages about um, phrases that we use to excuse inappropriate behavior. Eh, posteamos o enviamos o publicamos diferentes frases que utilizamos para justificarnos. 
And we said, HR doesn't need defending, HR needs a re revolution. Y dice, eh, Recursos Humanos no necesita defenderse, Recursos Humanos necesita revolucionarse. And the response was overwhelming. Y la respuesta fue grata. So we are still out there. You can find us on Instagram. Nos pueden buscar en Instagram. And now we have had people reaching out to us over and over again, asking for help, asking for advice. Y ahora hay personas que nos llaman o nos buscan eh, pidiendo ayuda o consejo. And we're partnering with other organizations to really disrupt the HR profession. Eh, nos estamos reuniendo con otras organizaciones para discutir esto. So since I have an audience of some HR people, I want to talk about what I think is the most important role for us, which is having courage. Sin embargo, quiero hablar de lo que es eh, que recursos humanos, el, más, eh, el rol más importante es que tengamos coraje. So let's talk about the ways that HR has failed employees. Entonces hablemos de cómo recursos humanos ha fallado a sus empleados. Not speaking up enough. No hablando, no levantando la, eh, la voz suficiente. We've had investigations that go nowhere. Tenemos investigaciones que van a ningún lado. We've covered up bad behavior. <coughs> hemos, eh, hemos tapado el mal comportamiento. And we've protected the wrong people. Y hemos protegido a las personas incorrectas. We've had too much bureaucracy. Tenemos mucha burocracia. And we have failed in Me Too. Y hemos, y hemos eh, fallado en Me Too. So I want to end by talking about what we think can be done. Entonces deseo terminar eh, dándoles eh, unas, eh, diciendo qué es lo que podemos hacer. I actually have a whole talk that's an hour long just on this subject. Tengo una charla de una hora solamente de este tema. But I'll give you a few things to think about as you go. Pero les voy a dar unas cosas para que ustedes piensen. And the first is acts of courage. Y la primera es actos de coraje. I'm asked with every single speech that I do, what can I do? How can I make an impact? En cada una de las conferencias que doy, me hacen preguntas de qué puedo hacer, cómo puedo causar impacto. And I tell people, start with where you are. You can start small. Y yo les digo a las personas, empiecen con do, en, en donde ustedes están, empiecen pequeño. But recognize those areas where you have to be courageous. Pero reconozcan esas áreas donde deben de tener coraje. And focus on what you can impact, whether that's your company or your team, if you're part of a large organization. Y enfóquense en lo que, I'm sorry, can you repeat? And focus on what you can control. Y enfóquense en lo que pueden controlar. Start speaking up. Eh, empiecen a, a alzar la voz. In HR, we are supposed to be the keepers of confidentiality. En recursos humanos, somos nosotros los cuidadores de la, de la confianza. But that does not mean that we have to be silent when it really matters. Pero eso no quiere decir que nos tengamos que quedar callados cuando realmente vale la pena. I think we also have to examine our structures within companies. También tenemos que examinar eh, las estructuras de, nuestras, eh, de nuestra compañía. So for example, if human resources reports to the finance team, that person will not be able to be independent. Por ejemplo, si Recursos Humanos le reporta al, eh, al Departamento Financiero, esa persona no va a tener a quien responder. So it's important for us to focus on making commitments, not just action plans. Lo que es importante es enfocarse en, eh, en hacer compromisos y no en planes de acción. And what I mean by that is we cannot just check off the boxes and think that we're done. This is a long-term commitment that we have to make to our team. Y a lo que me refiero con eso es no darle solo chequecito a las cajas y decir, eh, ya pasó, sino que trabajar con mi equipo. So what I want to leave you with is the idea, think about what, are, what is one act of courage that you could take tomorrow. Con lo que los quiero dejar es eh, que piensen qué acto de valor podrían tomar ustedes el día de mañana. Whether it's a big one or a small one, they will all add up. Así sea grande o pequeño, todos van a sumar. And again, HR needs a revolution, and revolution starts with small actions. Una vez más, eh, recursos humanos necesitan una revolución, y empieza con actos pequeños. 
So this is where you can find us if you want to see our website or if you want to see us on Instagram. Así es como nos pueden encontrar en Instagram o en la web. And I think we have a few minutes left. I could answer a few questions if anybody has them. Tenemos unos minutos para preguntas y respuestas si alguien desea. All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Muchas gracias. Apreciamos su tiempo.